The SDLC design phase is where the development team determines how to implement the software to satisfy the requirements. This is the phase where the application is broken down into small objects, components, and modules, which are described in detail. So much so that a skilled team of developers and engineers could build the application based on the design. The design phase is where the requirements specifying what the system must do are translated into the design, which specifies how the system will be implemented. The design is repeatedly refined, adding more and more detail, until it becomes a recipe for how to implement and test the final system. This work is done by the entire development team, including the architect, database and software engineers, and the quality assurance team, all guided by project management. The process starts with refining the high-level software architecture, defining the high-level interfaces between the modules. The high-level interface description shows which modules talk to each other and what is sent between them. This includes not only communication between modules, but also communication to existing systems in the production environment. The description will also specify the method or protocol used for the communication and the physical network for distributed systems. The software architecture will be reviewed to ensure it covers all functional requirements and will deliver a product that meets the system requirements as well, such as performance, security, and scalability. The different modules in the software architecture will be assigned to members on the development team who will be responsible for their detailed design. During detailed design, large modules would be broken down into smaller ones, with their own descriptions, interfaces, and diagrams which show how to implement the module and software. Design engineers often use prototyping, investigating areas that are unclear or unknown, to gain clarity and determine a design approach. Stakeholders and customers review and comment on GUI wireframes and screen layouts that show the flow through the product's user interface. And database designers add additional detail to the logical entity relationship model to create the final database schema. Quality assurance is also hard at work, using the requirements to develop the strategy the QA team will use to validate the final system. Areas of QA planning will include how defects will be reported and tracked, how software will be delivered from development to the QA team for validation, and how the different tests will be performed. Planning also includes specifications for the isolated test environments. An area of special interest is how acceptance testing with the customer will be accomplished, as this determines if the customer will accept the implemented system. During this phase, build-out of the development environments must be completed, as they will be needed to implement the application in the development phase that comes next. The design phase activities result in artifacts that are used in the development phase to implement the final system. The architecture, or high-level design document, gives a blueprint of the entire system which will be built. It will include the software architecture, which specifies the modules and the interfaces between them and external systems, as well as communication methods. The user interface flow will be described with the wireframe screens, and the logical database model will also be included, showing entities and their relationships. The architecture document will include many diagrams, such as UML system diagrams and database entity relationship diagrams. However, it will still primarily specify what must be implemented, without details of how to implement it. The details of how to implement each module are specified in the detailed design document. For each module, the detailed design document describes the algorithms and data structures used, detailed design diagrams, and detailed interfaces. The interfaces will include the exact data items transferred between modules, along with their data type and other attributes, like permanence and scope. Detailed design diagrams may include UML diagrams that show the structure and behavior of objects in the module, 
data flow diagrams, flowcharts, and sequence diagrams. Some projects will use pseudocode to define the actual structure of the code, which will be implemented for each module. The user interface will be mocked up to demonstrate the look and feel of the final screens the user will experience. And the database detailed design will be created, which specifies the details of each table, including column names and data types, as well as column and table constraints. Views, triggers, stored procedures, and other database objects will also be specified in detail, as well as the method of how users will be authenticated and what database objects will be authorized for the different roles. The resulting detailed database design will be used to write the database schema. In distributed systems, the data dictionary will also be created to specify the meaning, origin, usage, and format of each data item, and the relationships between it and other data items in the production environment. All the planning done by the QA team is captured in the Quality Assurance Plan document. The Quality Assurance Plan describes how the validation strategy will be implemented to verify the system and ensure it is of high quality. The Quality Assurance Plan will include a schedule of the QA activities throughout the project and the documents that will be produced in each project phase. The review process for formal reviews will also be described, as well as any metrics which will be collected. The plan will also include guidelines to ensure adherence to standards, regulations, and company business processes. A large part of the Quality Assurance Plan will cover the types of tests performed, including unit, functional compliance, system, regression, and acceptance testing. The different test environments required will be described in detail, as well as the methods used to report and track defects. As QA has responsibility for oversight across the entire software development process, other areas may also be covered to ensure quality in training, deployment, and audits.